Right everybody, this is my good mate now, Paul from Pottinger. We've got to know each other a lot over the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Not so sure Paul's that excited about oh, that, but <laughs> but long story short, um, we were invited out to Pottinger earlier this year, uh, both their tillage factory in Czechoslovakia and their main uh, factory where the hay and forage equipment is mostly all made in Austria. And uh, we were having a conversation with, with these guys about what machine of any they would want us at Grassmen to showcase for them. And the answer was a resounding A10 butterfly mowers, which combined both their Alpha Motion front mower, which you claim is by far the best floating mower out there, and the black ones. So that's what we've done. How did the mowers arrive? Yeah, well, I guess following on from your factory visit, we wanted to showcase another aspect of machines which not everyone really sees and that's how they're transported. I think it was a bit of an eye-opener for everyone including me maybe in a way that you know the machines are not only designed to be form and function but they have to be transported as well and you've seen uh, how many bits and pieces arrived in it was a bit of a minefield. Uh, you can see the leftovers of the scrap metal that just held them you know they have to be put in a way that they can be put in a container or they can be but having said that, the design of the machine would not never be compromised for transport, you know. The machine is designed for function first and then they have to try transport it. But obviously someone's job somewhere is to design the transport side of it and what bits to take off. But ultimately, these, what looks as a lovely set of A10 mowers with the belts all sitting ready to go to the field. I don't know, many bits and pieces turned up and there was four main crates, five main crates off the top of my head. There was the main bit in the, the middle with the left arm, and then there was all the boxes and the accelerators around that. And that's what we said we were going to do mm. here at the barn. We were going to start at the start and build them just to let people see what's involved and in bringing that all together. So what and, way did you go about and it? And what's involved for the dealer, you know, he has a build process and a PDI process, and it's something that he has to factor in. You know, so your dealer does this? Yes, of course, yep. So we're kind of maybe not totally unique, but we are operating in Ireland as, yeah, not just an importer, say. We are Pottinger employees. Pottinger owns their own premises in Ireland, and we bring the machines direct to the dealer then. So we're not bringing them to our base, assembling and then trying to send them out. Uh, all transport is done direct to... Yep to the dealer so there's no middleman you know so in this case we just treated us like a dealer and you exactly yeah and, yep. and you you and ben me and ben yeah my yeah partner in crime ben yeah um so you played the role of a dealer exactly played the role of <laughs> for, a the dealer. Last couple, yeah. for the last couple of days yeah. and see what a dealer really goes through <laughs> describe the process of putting them together so where did you start what way did you go about it the build process comes very well documented which it has to be to every nut and bolt so it was a step-by-step -step -step process. Um, that's all on our partner portal. So you download it, we use it on the iPad, and you follow it step-by-step -step like a mechano. Now, of course, some people like to jump in and maybe get ahead of themselves, and then you realize, oh no, I should have been doing that, and suddenly you're taking- Did that off. happen, you and Ben, that, never? That might have happened, me and Ben, yeah. So- So they're not yeah. perfect. No, <clears throat> no. But we wanted to make sure it was 100% right. Where did also. you start? We started with mounting the lifting frame onto the tractor. The main, the main frame. On the three point linkage. Yeah, onto the tractor. And then we had to line up the mower units then in the vicinity of the main frame. So we assembled all the mower units. And then we had to try, and this was always the tricky point, is getting this pin in. This was one of the main obstacles. So to get all this lined up, there's very little room here for any for any play, so to get this lined up that it's flush going in there, that was the, and that went really well. We were delighted with that. We were surprised ourselves how we managed but to I, get that. But I came out at that, but my eyes Exactly, yeah. Yeah, just saying. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you see, another thing I should say, for the production process, we build a base mower, and then when you want options, the options can be added on, say, nearly as the lorry is going out the gate, which are mowers. So for example, the lights, Say you, you decide during the week before the mower is going to be delivered, oh, I would like LED lights. Well, they are then put into the lorry, but then it's up to the dealer to put them on. So yes. it leaves, leaves a very... Now these A10s yeah. are the all singing, all dancing, 
Pottinger can't deliver anything better if that's the right way to word that. That is your creme de la creme. Yeah, she's the new generation of A10, so we've a whole new drive system, a wide drive system. Then we have things like a SWAT comb, we have LED lights, she's load sensing, she's fully isobus controlled, which is really nice on this John Deere tractor. Like, you have 33 feet of more beds here. This is not a, this is not a toy. And then your bed is your own design bed. Yes. Now, a lot of people going yes. back to Ponder a few years ago will have it in their head. The Pottinger used the, the Comer bed, which mm. they did do, but mm. that's no longer. No. It's your own design bed. As you've seen yourself in the factory, a welded bed, you know, and it's really, we are, yeah, in a good place with this bed, I have to say, fully tested in-house and, yeah. And it holds about four litres yeah. of oil. four litres of oil, huh? You're on the ball, huh? After you get your two side mount mowers onto the arms. This is where it's, we are in a nice place with this mower, because it was quite easy to put on the groupers and we are kind of unique because we are running the groupers via the tractor's oil system. So we've no onboard hydraulics, we've no extra weight, none of that plumbing. Yeah. So to put them on was two hoses and two wires and those three pins. But that's also nice for the farmer. He can take them off himself with three pins so at the start of the season if he's doing a lot of tedding or whatever, take them off and now this time of year or whatever he can put them on in 15 minutes himself. The other big thing we can see around over here which you don't very often see in moors mm. we have an auto grease. Yes and you know that speaks for itself I guess we're only missing a few points we're not auto greasing these pins because people will want to take off that uh, the grouper sometimes but it's only the shafts that need greasing after that you know your PTO shaft yeah. so and that's all controlled via our own control box so if that sees irregular irregular pressures like too much pressure it knows maybe a pipe is blocked something's not getting grease or too uh, not enough pressure it knows that maybe there's a, a pipe burst so while it's uh, all regulated through our own control box the main control unit in the back is where all your pressure valves everything's sitting in there all your controls your brains Yes. Everything is in this this box. A that's job computer. Just job. Com what do you call it? A job computer. A, then the job computer. Yep. Your two arms is coming out. Yep. This more can effectively do this. Yes. Yes. In 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 a few ways. So you, she can extend 400 mil each side. So basically to widen your cut to 31 and a half feet. That inner overlap allows you to turn without misses and things like that. Or on side hill, for example, you can send both mowers up the hill. So if you're side slipping a bit, you're still getting that grass. So they don't just steer out and in, they can steer both ways. And the weight alleviation on the mowers then is automatic as well. So if she's out, she can put more uh, up pressure in it. So it keeps the same running weight on the mowers all the time. So that's regulated. The pressure uh, on this is regulated by this position too. And you can set that from the cab. But a step further before you go, unique with a tractor similar to this spec, you can automate, automate it on the work screen, you press an auto button and she'll follow the turning angle of the front, uh, the, the front axle of the tractor then. So when you're turning right, she'll steer the mowers in that direction to stop any misses. So that's your bike mowers, two belts, drip yep. of the tractor. And But just to go back, you can downspec this mower to anything you want. It doesn't have to be load sensing and all that job computer. It can go back to a basic double acting spool valves and a pre-select control box as well. So we've everything in between. Because some people might be a little put off by all that technology. Others just adore it, you know. We've had this Alpha Motion mower out um, two, three years ago now for our DVD. We made donkey contracts. Ewell Cain supplied us with a Deutsch side mounted more on the front more mm -hmm. the alpha motion on straight away all i can say is that the flotation on the more is phenomenal we had the same spec type more we had the button in the tractor that we were able to lift and lower what is so special about this more because that was well, the one product that they were uh, raving about when we were over in austria at hq yeah well it's not a new design to be honest and what's special is yeah it's worked so well over the last 10 years. Like basically it's a pulled mower, not a push mower. So you know yourself when you get in, you set your lift arms to a certain height and then it's the onboard hydraulics of the mower that are doing the work. So like... So that, that is where fundamentally 
the more the right back to basics that's where the more slightly different to some of the other mowers in the market that's using the flotation and the front linkage you're fixing your, yeah. your height yeah and you're using the hydraulics to and mower the mower as you would do a trail mower and the mower is hinged from there from the front so it's it's like a, a pull mower it's not being pushed so you have much better ground adaption then but what's the secret the secret is in that headstock and you know it's in it th 10 years and yeah what i like about it it's nice and light as well you have great visibility it's a narrow headstock so from the cab you really have nice visibility yeah What's unique to this one over any of the rest of them? Not much really, but for example, those hydraulic folding side guards are plumbed into the rear ones. So when you're folding in on the control box of your back mowers, these ones will follow suit. Well then, okay, we have the all singing, all dancing, yeah. A10 Pottinger mowers, right? The best that you can do. If you're, you're challenging me, right? me now. Now, combined on an isobus tractor mm -hmm. with the GPS, as you can see on mm -hmm. the roof, the, the latest and greatest mm -hmm. technology mm -hmm. that John Deere can offer. What can these mowers do that's different with all this technology from your standard one you talked about a wee bit where you still push your lever and drop your back, your two back mowers and then your second lever and drop your front mower? Because that's the old school mowing with three mowers. Where am I getting the benefit of the extra money that I have pumped into both tractor and mowers over a season. It's very hard to drive at 33 feet all day long. Like you will be missing, you will be overlapping. So with the likes of that, you know, you have such room for not making mistakes, room for always being driving right. We link into the tractors, I suppose, and we can go through all that maybe in the control. You can set distances, there's a lot to it, so you can press, it. we have a one button function like, so when you press that, at that certain point, then your rear mowers will drop at the exact same point. We're getting close to section control being automated, same like sprayers and in tillage, that's very close, uh, it's not on this just yet. So what happens is you'll cut your headland and then you'll just drive your ins and outs and she'll lift and drop mowers automatically, very, it's section control but it's not just on this one just yet. But basically what you're saying is at the minute, so we can go back to the one the one touch button, so we can hit the button, go, she'll drop the front more, yeah. and then she'll have herself timed, whatever it is. Distance, she'll, yeah. Distance, yeah. she'll drop the back more at exactly yeah. at the same point as the front more went yeah. down. Yeah. We can go on the GPS, if we give our steering wheel a little bit of a twist in a corner, she will steer the mowers to yeah. work with us as best as yeah. she can. Yeah, to the limit, everything has a limit. And you can set it that it gives you an alarm that when you go beyond the limit, it's a, bit, it's a calibration that she'll give you a little beep to say you're missing. Now, sometimes you have no choice, you're in a corner, but it will let you know that you are skipping. What do you think of the tractor we gathered up to put in these moors? It feels, yeah, look at it. It's, I don't know what to say. It's a really impressive machine. Uh, it was very easy to mount them. Uh, the moors are very close to the back wheels, which you like. Uh, we didn't have to do anything, everything was just plug and play, which is always reassuring. Sometimes you plug in and you're getting false with this machine, everything just plugs straight in. Well this is the absolute latest and greatest yeah. in John Deere, the John Deere Arsenal. It is the the track that everybody's been raving about, the the 230 and the 250R that they've all been talking about, slightly bigger, yeah. slightly heavier, slightly stronger and a little bit more power than what was being offered on the likes yeah. of your 6215Rs. Yeah. Yeah. This tractor's boosting to, we'll not get into the exacts, yeah. but it's 250 horse with a power boost almost to 300, it's just a little bit in the shy side of it. Um, Sure, like that's that's kind of what you aim at when yeah. you're at these type of mowers and to have it on the tractor that's not you know, still a compact tractor, I think it's a perfect match. How simple is it to set that up from the GPS to go into the field to mow? It is very easy to set up. Of course, when you're not used to any machine, it takes time. And especially now, if you, ha if you were used to the tractor, it would be easy to get more used to the mowers because, you know, you're not trying to find things on the tractor. But for someone like here now, Getting used to the tractor and the mowers, it takes a shake longer, but absolutely very user-friendly display in that tractor. Our control box comes up straight away, full screen. Uh, yeah, so and it's easy to navigate through it. All the pages are there. She has enough functions down the right side of the screen to suit our mowers. So up until now, 
And, I, the, and this I'm tractor's hungry. got the new command pro joystick and yeah. you have some of the functions programmed into it as well. Joystick itself, we have three functions programmed already right at your hand, so the front mower dropping and the left and right are on the gear stick which your hand sits all day. So they're at your fingertips. Then we have the secondary joystick there that we can reassign certain things like maybe shifting the mowers or, and that's completely up to the operator. We don't say, right, you need this, this and this. It's, and that's the joy of it. It's programmable to what you want. This is the, the, the primary job that we're, that we're putting it to. And, and uh, so it's all coming together and looking well. Yeah. Plus the Pottinger stands out against the John yeah. Deere. The two of them, them complement each other, so they do.